All 10 LCS teams have reportedly voted against making NACL mandatory for 2024. All 10 LCS teams have reportedly voted against making NACL mandatory for 2024. However, they are pushing for the rule to be dropped against dropped starting with this summer split. Riders Pakistan announced the decision on Monday regarding whether teams will still be required to have a NACL team. Like people are upset, right? And I get that. But the issue is, it's not financially viable. You guys realize the LEC doesn't have any, doesn't have any, like, Excel doesn't have an academy team. G2 doesn't have an academy team. Fnatic doesn't have an academy team. It's just not, it's not, just, it's just not financially viable. I don't think this is too crazy, right? At the bottom line is, it's like, organizations need to be allowed to do whatever is financially sound for them. And while that's disappointing because the whole conversation surrounding... Some of the rhetoric surrounding franchising, it's like, oh, this will allow us to take big risks and this is, uh, this is going to allow us to um, uh, focus on NA talent and so forth. But in the end, it's, it, it is, it's a venture that it just hasn't worked well. And at the end of the day, right, if, if you look at it, look at things, like let's pull up the league PD, okay? Let's, let's, let's look at NA, okay? So the top end of the player base in NA they're getting chances, right? But I think most of the time, if I'm an organization owner, right? It's like, I will I will feel, sleep more soundly knowing I take risks on uh, up and coming Korean players uh, just because of the nature of the Korean server, right? Breaking out as an NA talent is extremely hard either way. It's like, how many talent, how many, th how many NA talents have been stuck in challenger for that long right and maybe you know for sure there are players that deserve opportunities some players that deserve opportunities less it's just in my mind like it's it's just you, you have to face the music at some point and the issue is north america is moving towards minor region status you know that's the problem and i don't know how the level of investment is going to balance out you know peter dunn said the good na prospects should go to rls yeah sure they should yeah but that makes it sound like it's some like uh, door that they could just um, go through, you know? It's not that easy. I think the bottom line is this is definitely a natural progression. It's like franchising was an absolute failure. I understand that the rhetoric was surrounding like NA talent or whatever, but was it a failure? I don't know if it was a failure. It was a failure in the sense that there was heavy, heavy overinvestment that inflated the price. That part is a massive failure. That part is a massive failure, yes. But I can imagine for these orgs, right, for, to have some sense of stability in terms of uh, acquiring sponsors and so forth, it, it must have been way easier. My main question in regards to franchising, right, is like each team paid from 8 to 12 million to enter the, the, the franchise. Where did this money go? I'm curious. It's a lot of money. I probably built the arena, they did some other things, right, but... I think that's that's the big issue, right? It's like the, the price tag of a lot of things have become really overinflated. And it's like there was a big influx of money from venture capitalists and people modeled their organizations based off of those investments. Broadcast costs. Well, there was a broadcast before franchise, right? Where did that money come from? Eastwood has always been a bubble. Look at how ridiculous Fortnite prizes were in the first world championship. That wasn't that big of a deal. Like... For a game developer to ape in like a big prize, like five million or whatever, that's not that big of a deal for them. I can assure you. Like an additional layer of this, right? They're voting against making it mandatory. That doesn't mean that some teams will just completely abandon the pro their project. Some teams will still have challenger teams. I like I I believe in autonomy of decision making, right? So if a team believes that they don't gain anything from having a challenger team, so be it. If so, if teams believe that they gain something from having a challenger team, so be it. And if the system is just too terrible, then so be it. That's it.